quick video on my Ascend 12T uh, troller motor. Inside the hatch, let's see, let me get, let's see if I can get it better. Maybe some light. So inside the hatch, I keep the PWM, which my mount here. Let's see if that's a little bit better. So inside here, I keep the PWM and two batteries. The batteries that I use are twelve volt, eighteen amp hour batteries. And the the size of those. Let's say, let me get a tape measure. The size of those of them, let's see, two and three quarter, so say three inches by seven. By six and a half. So these batteries, they're AGM batteries, so you know you can are sealed you can lay them down you know they're not uh, liquid so each of these has 18 amp hours and what I do is I run two of them sometimes I, I originally had a run in a series or I'm sorry uh, parallel not series uh, parallel so you still get 12 volts with both batteries but you basically double your amp amperage. Uh, so that would take these from two 18, one 18 amp hour to basically a 36 amp hour. Um, I used to have, I had two connectors on here so that I could run par uh, parallel these two batteries together, but I actually took it off and now I just run one battery at a time um it's not it's not really necessary i guess for my use case to try to keep them parallel um because a lot of times when i'm only going out for a half a day i only take one battery i don't take two and so far i've gotten i get maybe i don't know i haven't ran one down below what 12 volts you know 12 2 or 12 3 12.2 12 or 12.3 12 volts um and that's out for four or five hours uh, i usually go to a a small lake here by my house i don't i don't know how big it is um but it's you know i might run maybe a quarter of a mile to a mile full throttle uh to get out to a spot and then uh, from there, I might cruise around for a little bit, you know, on low. Um, some I might paddle a little bit. And so far, you know, one battery has lasted me a pretty good amount of time. Uh, so let me pull the PWM out first. And just, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a link to everything in the bottom, in the thing down below uh, the video, just so you know what to get. I, I also run my depth finder off here too. I have a little fuse block with like a, what are they, five amp fuses. Uh, so basically, how this works. Let's see if I can get a better angle here. So I have, this is just a, a cutting board, all right? And I use the cutting board also on the mount for the motor. They're ideal size. It's like, 
up six by twelve or something. I don't know. It's well, I got a tape measure here. So let's see. Six six by ten. So there's six by ten cutting board, and it's, it seems so far like it's perfect size to fit your sixty amp breaker, the PWM. Uh, I just drilled through here and put a, I think it's a quarter by 20 or whatever, uh, nut and bolt. And I use that as a grounding post. Um, it just, in my opinion, it makes it a little bit easier to access things. If there's a problem, I can quickly take something apart, move it around, um, off of this, I run my depth finder, which comes out to these here. And this is just a, a ground goes over to here. And then a power goes right here. And on these terminals, I just put heat shrink. So right here, we have our power. I have a power in that comes into the breaker and then comes out of the breaker to the PWM. And if you got a PWM from the wireless troll pro wireless trolling pro guy, uh, he's got this labeled, which one is which uh, I took this apart. I think this is just a PWM. I don't think they made it. I think that this is just a PWM, uh, off of Amazon for 15 bucks. I paid a hundred dollars for this. It has a RF, uh, control here, um, potentiometer. I don't know much about the RF, but the PWM is most likely the 15 or $20 one off of Amazon. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think it is. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, get the PWM from the guy that's already made. If you do know what you're doing, just buy the one off of Amazon. Uh, because this guy, I recently got an email from them saying that, they weren't uh, accepting orders or something, or they were understaffed or something. I don't know. When I ordered this thing, it took an extremely long time for me to hear back from them. Um, when I bought it, I really didn't need it right away, so it wasn't that big of a deal. But it kind of concerned me a little bit. If there's a problem with this, if I got to send it back, then how long is it? You know, I, I don't know. So moving on, 16 amp breaker power comes in these are just trolling motor uh, cables connectors so power in comes into a breaker and I also have I don't know why that's so bright I also have a voltmeter here and that's just so I can run it off of I don't use the USB uh, I, I don't know I don't really have a need to charge my phone while I'm out on the kayak. Uh, usually when I get on the kayak, the phone's charged ahead of time. But mainly I got the voltmeter so that I can see how many volts are on the battery so I don't take the battery too low and damage it. So that just runs off of the breaker. Uh, it runs before the breaker. Um, it has an inline fuse. Uh, so I wasn't concerned about putting it after the breaker or running it through this fuse panel. Um, so the only thing that the breaker controls is the PWM. So let's unplug that. So these two batteries, they have the same connectors. Uh, so I just run one at a time. There's, there's really no point in it. And I tried to make everything easily accessible and removable because I put my kayak on a ladder rack on my pickup truck. Uh, so I take the batteries and the motor and everything off. I leave this in the kayak, but in, inside the hatch. Uh, so that your power comes in to the breaker, goes from the breaker to the output of the breaker to the inputs on the PWM. And then obviously from the outputs on the PWM to the motor. Uh, you have your kill switch. Basically, it works like frequently on boats and jet skis. If you pull this out, it cuts power, or I, I guess this is a ground. I don't know what it's actually cutting. It's probably a ground. I don't think power is running through that. 
Um, so if if the motor's gone and you fall out of the kayak, you know it won't keep going. Uh, depth finder, not just. I've been running the depth finder. I used to use this little. What is this four and a half amp hour battery out of a? It's out of a UPS. Um, I used to use this. It works good for just a depth finder if you're going to go out for a couple hours. Uh, I never had any issues with it, but now I just run the depth finder off of the same batteries as I run the trolling motor. Um, I'm not really drawing that much power with the depth finder, so it's not really going to drain the batteries. Stupid motorcycles to pull by. So from the output, let's get this out of the way. From the output, oh, and this is just a, I keep my phone in here, it's easily accessible. This is just a Walmart container, a waterproof Walmart container. And I just drilled some holes through the bottom, put some silicone on it, and then it comes through on the bottom of the hatch. Uh, and, you know, just so, it, I can just leave my phone in there and it's accessible and water's not going to get to it. So how this works here is I, I haven't drilled any, I haven't drilled any other holes for the voltmeter. I don't think I'm going to drill any holes for the voltmeter because I really don't want to drill unnecessary holes. The only thing that I use this for, I don't need it. It's not a car, uh, so I don't need to have like a dashboard where I can just plug everything in. So I just leave that inside of here. Um, the kill switch, I think what I'm going to do with the kill switch, let's see. I think what I'm going to do with the kill switch is this access hatch here. Underneath of here, I have my transducer uh, is siliconed to the hull, uh, and it works really well. It's been like that for a year, and I haven't had any issues with it. Um, I don't really use it that much for the water temperature. I'm not really concerned with the water temperature. Uh, I got a, a little infrared thing from RC cars that I can just shine in the water uh, to get a temperature. Um, but what I think I might do is on here, on this lid, uh, order another one of these. That way I have one that's not, um, you know, doesn't have a hole in it. Drill a hole in this and then run the kill switch from the PWM and have it come through here. So that way you put your kill switch on there and if you're sitting in the seat, you know. So I may do that for right now. I, I just kind of, I've only recently put this on, so I've just been testing it. Uh, so our motor output, I have another set of the trolling motor cables and that runs through the hull, you know, inside the hull to the back of the boat and I'll go to the back. I'll show the back of the boat in a minute. So all we do, all I do is plug that in like so, tuck it up there. And now we have the P, now we have the PWM. Um, I'm not really concerned with it sliding around that much. I, I have some foam out of, uh, there's some closed cell foam from, uh, I do IT type work. So I have, server boxes that come with this closed cell phone. So what I did was I I cut out some closed some of the, the closed cell phone. And the reason for the closed cell phone is it doesn't absorb water. Um, it'll help with flotation. It, it'll keep you from not sinking, but it's not going to make your boat more buoyant. Uh, I guess it's not going to sit higher in the water. So how these, what I do with these is, let's get a better view. Because these are only three inches,
they slide right in there under the floor. So that's going right here. Um, actually, I think I got that one. I think I have that one mixed up. I guess that doesn't matter. So those slide in there and because I have this foam in there, it kind of raises it up off the bottom, um, off of the, the, floor, the floor of the kayak. And the reason I did that is just in case I get some water in the hull. And that was the same reason why I did the cutting board. Uh, it's a good mounting platform. And inside the hull, you can see under there, it has, you know, if, the, if there's some water in there, it's not going to get all over the, the PWM. Um, I've had this kayak for a year and there's not been any water in here. I have one of the newer ones that I guess all the bungee areas in the front and the rear, uh, people were complaining about they leak. I pulled all the screws out of mine, but they don't go all the way through the kayak. So let's tuck that away and then we'll take the other one. So now I have both batteries are inside the hull of the kayak. One is over here and the others are the others over there. And then the PWM is here. Um, these really don't move around. I have another little piece of foam that I stick in there. Uh, I'm not going to stick it in there right now, but those the batteries are small enough. That, I mean, they're not lithium batteries, so they're not super small and super lightweight. They weigh 10 pounds each. So it's only 20 pounds between the two batteries. Um, the reason why I wanted these batteries and to either run them one at a time or run them in a parallel is because they're small enough to fit in the hull. And they're not, you know, I don't have to have this big, you know, 50 pound uh, deep cycle boat battery in the back of the kayak, making the kayak, you know, top heavy. Um, I, it's probably not that big of a deal, but it's just easier for me. I'm looking at it from a perspective of if I happen to flip the kayak, uh, one of the reasons why I built out the inside of this with the closed cell foam those batteries won't move around once I put the other piece in here. Um, so if I do, for some odd reason, flip the kayak, the, those batteries, they're not going to move. They're, they're not going to go anywhere because the foam has them kind of blocked in. Uh, so this cable here runs to the back of the boat and let's see we'll move to the back of the boat now